How to balance oxidation reduction reactions is going to be the topic of this lesson. My name is Chad and welcome to Chad's Prep, where my goal is to take the stress out of learning science. Now, in addition to high school and college science prep, we also do MCAT, DAT, and OAT prep as well. I'll leave a link in the description for where you can find those courses. Now, this lesson is part of my new general chemistry playlist. I'll be wrapping this one up actually here shortly, just a couple of chapters left. Uh, but if you'd like to be notified every time I post a new lesson, then subscribe to the channel, click the bell notification. All right, so balancing redox reactions is a little bit of a pain in the butt, I'm gonna warn you. There's a process to it. You've gotta pretty much memorize the process and learn it so that you can reproduce it uh, on an exam. Uh, there's a couple different methods, and we're gonna go through the most commonly taught one called the half reaction method. So but before we get there, we're gonna explore this just a little bit. Uh, but the first one, we're gonna balance two in this lesson. The first one is this reaction right here. We're gonna balance it, and uh, the thing that makes this so tricky is you, you gotta balance out the electrons, it turns out. The, again, with a redox reaction, electrons are being lost by one species, that's the species being oxidized, and gained by another species, that's the species being reduced. It's an electron transfer reaction. And you've gotta keep track of those electrons, because the electrons that are lost are the same electrons that are gained, and it has to balance out to be the same number of electrons. And so in addition to balancing all the elements, which you can see, C, you have to balance out the electrons, which you can't. And that gets to be a little bit tricky, as we'll see. All right, before we get there, though, I just want to take a look at this in a little more depth uh, in the context of who's being oxidized, who's being reduced and stuff, and we'll assign oxidation states to figure that out. And so in hydrogen peroxide, it's one of the examples we did in the last lesson, you'd assign hydrogen first as plus one, and that's going to leave oxygen to be minus one to balance. So. In the next one here, we've got lead, and lead is below the staircase. It's not a transition metal, technically, but it is below the staircase. We kind of treat it the same, and we'll balance him first, and he's going to have to be, being with a sulfide monatomic ion here, which is minus two, that means lead's going to have to be plus two, and that means sulfide as a monatomic ion is definitely going to be minus two. On the other side of the reaction, lead here with sulfate is still plus two, since sulfate as a polyatomic ion is minus two. So after that, we'd assign oxygen with his normal oxidation state, and since he's more electronegative, is minus two. And there's four of those for a total of minus eight. With the plus two lead, we need another plus six on the sulfur to make this balance out to zero for a neutral compound. And then finally, in water, we'd assign hydrogen first as plus one, and then oxygen second, therefore, is minus two to balance out to zero. And now we've assigned all our oxidation states. And again, you might not be as quick to assign them as this, but uh, word of the wise, get quick at assigning oxidation states. It will save you a ton of time in different places on this exam. All right, so we want to look at who's changing oxidation states, because that's kind of the hallmark of an oxidation reduction reaction, or redox reaction, reaction for short. Uh, find those who are gaining or losing electrons, and we find those by seeing who's changing oxidation states. So if we look here, hydrogen here is plus one. Well, hydrogen over here is still plus one. There's no change there. But look at oxygen. Oxygen's going from minus one here to minus two in these two places, oxygen is indeed changing. And going from minus one to minus two, no matter how you slice it, his oxidation state's getting more negative, well that's going down. Whether it means less positive or more negative, that means going down, and that's why they call it being reduced. And so oxygen is the element that is being reduced. Okay, you could also say, instead of just saying oxygen, you could say the entire reactant species it's a part of. So you could also say that H2O2, hydrogen peroxide, is being reduced, and both of those are true statements. So whether you want to identify the specific element within a compound, if it's in a compound, sometimes it really is in its elemental form and it's just the element. So, or whether or not you want to identify the entire chemical species, in this case compound that it's a part of, either way, on the reactant side, you can say it's the element or species being reduced. Now if we look, lead right here is plus two, and lead's plus two, he's not changing either. But sulfur goes from minus two up to plus six. His oxidation state's going up. So notice it's the, when the oxidation state goes down, like we saw with oxygen, that's when it's getting reduced. That's why they call it getting reduced. But when your oxidation state goes up, you're not getting reduced, you're getting oxidized. And this is where things get a little bit tricky. So oxygen, again, was getting reduced. But if you recall what reduced means, it means gaining electrons. And notice we normally associate, you know, something being reduced with losing something. And, you know, it's, but it's all backwards because we're gaining or losing electrons which are negatively charged. And if you gain negative charges, your oxidation state goes down. And if you lose negative charges, your oxidation state goes up. So exactly the opposite if we think about it like with your bank account. If you lose money, your bank account doesn't go up, it goes down. And when you gain money, your bank account doesn't go down, it goes up. So, but it's all backwards when we're talking about negatively charged things, like electrons in this case. 
And so again, key here, they call it reduction because your oxidation state gets reduced. It goes down, but you're gaining electrons. So just kind of keep that straight in your head here. So, but in this case, sulfur going from negative two up to positive six, it's definitely not going down, so it's not reduced. It's going up, that's being oxidized. That's a loss of negative charges, a loss of electrons. All right, now whether you want to say that sulfur was getting oxidized or that PBS was getting oxidized, both of those are true statements. And I'm emphasizing this for a point where I'm going to introduce two new terms here, the oxidizing agent or oxidant for short, the reducing agent or reductant for short. So, and these are going to seem a little bit backwards at first, but we'll be able to explain why that is. So it turns out the oxidizing agent is the reactant species that is being reduced, okay? The reducing agent is the reactant species that is being oxidized. And this is going to seem backwards here for a second, So, but it has this terminology for a very specific region. So let's just say that you were sick of my videos and you came over to my house and you punched me in the face. And so my question for you is who got punched? Well, I got punched. But did I do the punching? No, you did the punching. And so the one who does the punching and the one who gets punched are not the same person. In the same context here, the species that gets oxidized and the species that does the oxidizing are not the same species. The species that is doing the oxidizing is causing something else to get oxidized. Just like when you came over to my house and did the punching, you caused someone else to get punched. So same thing here, the oxidizing agent is causing something else to get oxidized. It's kind of like the secret agent I've hired to steal electrons from somebody, but it's causing somebody else to lose electrons. Well, how does the oxidizing agent cause another species to lose electrons? By taking them from them. And if the oxidizing agent is taking the electrons, well, that means the oxidizing agent is gaining those electrons and is therefore being reduced. And so that's why the terminology seems backwards at first glance, but they've got it correct here. The oxidizing agent causes another species to get oxidized by itself being reduced, and the reducing agent is going to cause another species to get reduced by itself being oxidized. All right, so if we go back and look at this, we said here that oxygen was going from minus one to minus two, no matter how you sliced it, and he was getting reduced. Well, the species that get reduced is the oxidizing agent. However, we have to be a little bit careful. We said that we could say that it's the element oxygen that's getting reduced, or we could say that it's hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, that's getting reduced. But when you identify the agents here, you have to name the entire reactant chemical species that that element is a part of. So you couldn't say that oxygen, in this case, is the oxidizing agent. You have to say that hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, is the oxidizing agent. So be careful, when we identify these agents, it's the entire chemical reactant species uh, uh, that we have to identify, not just the individual element, unless it happens to be in its elemental form, but otherwise it's the entire chemical species, either uh, compound or ion. So the reducing agent, well, the reducing agent is causing something else to get reduced. It itself is being oxidized, it's losing electrons. So we identified that sulfur was the one that was losing electrons and getting oxidized. But again, if I'm gonna name the agent here, the reducing agent, I can't just name sulfur, I have to name the entire reactant species he's a part of, which is PBS. And so PBS here is the reducing agent or reductant for short. Cool, so I just wanted to make sure you realize, first of all, how we define oxidizing agent, reducing agent, how to identify them, and then properly, how to identify that it's the entire chemical species. Notice. The agents are always gonna be on the reactant side of a reaction, never on the product side, word of the wise. Also, the species getting oxidized and reduced are also always gonna be on the reactant side and never on the product side, if you're, at least if you're identifying the entire chemical species. So just keep that in mind. All right, so now that we've got through that, let's go back to balancing these lovely redox reactions. So with the half reaction method. And so it turns out we're going to split apart the oxidation half of the reaction and the reduction half of the reaction into separate what we call half reactions. And that is going to be the first step in this half reaction method. So uh, in this case, we can look at oxygen going from negative one to negative two. So, and then sulfur going from negative two to positive six. And it might be a little unclear. Well, is oxygen negative one to negative two either here or here? Which one is it? Well, we'll come back to that in a sec. Let's do the other half first. It's a little bit easier to identify. Sulfur only has one place to start and one place to end up, and that has to be one half of the reaction. So we'll have PBS solid going to PB 
SO4 solid, and that's gonna be the oxidation half of the reaction. All right, so then what we got left then, H2O2, definitely involved. And therefore it's gonna to have to be involved with water on the other side, the, the thing we haven't used yet. So technically we could have thought, well, maybe it's gonna be with the oxygens in the PVSO4, but we already used them in the oxidation half. So it'll just be the oxygen in the water and the reduction half here. All right, so now we've split this up into half reactions, an oxidation half and a reduction half. And no, we might not have realized this was the oxidation half and this was the reduction half had we not already assigned oxidation numbers. So, and the truth is you don't actually have to start off by assigning oxidation numbers. In fact, that's gonna slow you down quite a bit. As long as you can identify who's oxidized, who's reduced, or at least who's gonna be changing oxidation states and put them in separate half reactions, I wouldn't even care if you knew this was the oxidation half and this was the reduction half, just as long as you properly identified the two halves and split it up, good place to start. All right, so now you wanna balance all the elements except for oxygen and hydrogen. So it turns out we're gonna balance oxygen and hydrogen in a uh, special way. So you wanna balance all the other elements first. So in this case, we wanna make sure the leads are balanced, they are. Want to make sure the sulfurs are balanced? They are. The only thing not balanced is oxygen, and you always save oxygen and hydrogen for last. Okay, in the other half, all we have is oxygen and hydrogen, so everything else is already balanced. All right, so that's rule number two. Rule number three, you balance oxygens by adding water. So it turns out our redox reactions are always going to be aqueous reactions. They're taking place in water, and so water has the option of showing up as a reactant or a product in any given redox, and it turns out that's why we're able to balance oxygens by adding waters in any case. Now in the first half, the oxidation half, we've got four oxygens on the right. We don't have any on the left. So we're gonna to need to add some waters over here. And the question becomes, well, how many waters? Well, in this case, I've got four oxygens over here. I need to have four oxygens over here. So we'll have to add four waters. In the other one here, we've got two oxygens on the left, one oxygen on the right. So we'll have to add another water over here. And instead of putting plus water, well, this is water as well. I'm just gonna put a two here. It's not normally how it worked because we don't normally already have water in the, in, the, in the half reaction, but we did in this case. All right, finally, now we balance hydrogens. Now, we always do oxygen second to last and hydrogens is the very last thing you balance. And the reason that is, is that, well, you balance oxygens by adding waters. And when you add waters, you're gonna add more hydrogens. And if you'd already balanced the hydrogens first, well, then that would throw it off. So it's always oxygen second to last and hydrogens very last. And in this case, we've got a total of eight H atoms on the left, so we're gonna need eight H atoms on the right. And just like we always balance oxygens by adding water molecules, we're always gonna balance hydrogens by adding H plus. Cool, now it turns out that redox reactions can happen either under acidic or basic conditions. The evidence that they're under acidic conditions is H plus. The evidence that they'd be under basic conditions would be the presence of OH minus. So, and it turns out by default with our half reaction method, we will always by default balance in acid. And if you have to balance under basic conditions, and you'll find out that you can be asked either, then we'll have an extra step to add at the very end. But by default, we'll start always by balancing in acid. All right, now we've got eight H's over here. So I'm gonna need eight H pluses here. Uh, for this one, we've got two H's on the left. We've got a total of four H's on the right. So I'm gonna need more H's on the left. And in fact, I'd need two more. Let's get some states on there. And now all the elements are balanced. So again, oxygen second to last, hydrogen's dead last. And once all the elements are balanced, you see that rule number five says balance the charge by adding electrons. Now, you might look at this and be like, well, sulfur went from minus two to plus six. That's a change of eight. I'm all the way down, you know, two below zero to six above zero. That's a change of eight. So, and we might figure out that, oh, that's today, eight electrons being lost. So, however, we don't need to figure that out. If we just balance out the charges overall here, we'd figure that out anyways. So if we look here, water's a neutral compound. I don't have to assign individual oxidation states, but as an entire compound, no overall charge. Same thing with lead sulfide, that's a neutral compound, no overall charge. And same thing for lead sulfate, that's an overall neutral compound, no overall charge. So I don't actually have to assign individual oxidation states for this purpose, just have to know what the overall charges are on each side of the reaction. And so here we can see though that with eight H pluses, they're plus one each and there's eight of them, there's a total charge here of plus eight. And so now I need to add the electrons and the electrons are gonna balance out the charge. And since electrons are negative, you have to add them to whichever side of the half reaction here is more positive 
till the charges are the same. And it doesn't mean you, they have to both be equal to zero, but just till they're the same. If that happens to be zero, great. If it's plus two, great. If it's minus two, whatever. It's just till they're the same. Well, in this case, this side is zero. This side is plus eight. This is the more positive side. It's the side that's gonna get electrons. How many does it need till both sides have the same charge? That's eight electrons. Now both sides would be zero. So, and it just happened to be because this side was already zero. But again, had this side been plus two, well, then I would have only added six electrons or something like that. So, but the electrons balance out the charge. And the next one here, we've got a total of plus two right here. So, but zero here and zero here. And so the more positive side now is on the left-hand side. And it's plus two, the other side zero. How many electrons do I need to add to this more positive side till they have the same charge? Well, that's gonna be two electrons. Cool, now both sides have the same charge. And again, it just happens to be zero in this example. Now, when electrons are on the reactant side of the half reaction, that is the reduction half reaction. Those electrons are being gained. When electrons are on the right-hand side, the product side of the half reaction, those electrons have been lost. That is the oxidation half reaction. And again, if you've done this correctly, you should have electrons on one side and one half and on the other side and the other half. This is an electron transfer reaction. We need no, one species to have lost electrons and one species to have gained electrons. Now, it turns out that the, the electrons that are being gained by one half reaction are the same electrons that were being lost by the other. It's just an electron transfer reaction. And so the number of electrons in both the half reactions has to match. So I can't just, you know, gain two electrons if I lost eight over here. If you lost eight over here, you got to gain eight over here. So, or if I gained two over here, I'd want to have lost two over here, but these numbers don't match. And so what you've got to say then is they need to match and you need to multiply these by some multiples till they do match. And so the question you have to ask yourself is what is the least common multiple between two and eight? and that's what you're gonna balance it to. Well, the least common multiple between two and eight is eight. They both go into eight evenly. And so this one already is eight, I'll leave him alone. But this one is not eight yet, so we're gonna go ahead and multiply this entire half reaction times four. Cool, and if you notice, that's gonna make this now eight electrons plus eight H plus. It multiplies all the coefficients by four plus four H2O2 goes to 8 H2O. So that is the new half reaction balanced out to eight electrons. And now that the first half reaction and the second half reaction are balanced to the same number of electrons, now we can add them together. And normally we've written both of these over again. So I'm gonna write this top one over again even though nothing has really changed. So that way we can add these two half reactions together. Anything that shows up on both sides is going to cancel, but I'll worry about that in just a little bit. So we're gonna put all the reactants together on one side of an arrow and all the products of both combined half reactions together on the other side of the arrow. So in this case, we're gonna have eight electrons plus eight H plus. That doesn't look like eight H plus. There we go, it looks better. Plus four H2O2, and now the reaction to the second one as well, so plus four H2O plus PBS. And so all the reactants combined on the one side of the arrow, and then all the products on the other side. And so eight H2O plus PBSO4 plus eight H plus plus eight electrons. Now, if you've done this correctly, the electrons should cancel. Anything that shows up in the same quantity on both sides is going to cancel. So these eight electrons are going to cancel out these eight electrons. But because H plus and H2O are often used to balance out oxygens and hydrogen so commonly, you might have some of those showing up in both of these on both sides of this as well as we do. Notice these eight H plus are going to cancel out these eight H plus. And we don't have an equal number of waters on both sides, but we do have waters on both sides. And all four of these are gonna cancel out four out of the eight of these, leaving us with four left. And now we've canceled out everything that we can cancel, and so what you've got left is your balanced reaction. So in this case, we've just got these four water, I'm sorry, these four peroxides right here, hydrogen peroxides, plus PBS, going to four waters plus PBSO4, and that's it. Cool, now by default I said we balance reactions in acid. 
So and usually the hallmark of a reaction that's been balanced in acid is you see H plus in the reaction somewhere. The hallmark that it's been balanced in base is that you see OH minus in it somewhere. But in this example, all the H plus is canceled. And so for this rare example, you actually couldn't tell the difference of whether it was balanced in acid or base, and because there's no H plus or OH minus in the overall balanced reaction. And so in this case, they wouldn't have to tell you to balance an acid or base, but most of the time when they give you a reaction, they have to specify, balance this reaction in acid or balance this reaction in base. If they don't tell you which, just proceed like normal, balance it in acid by default, and you're probably gonna find out that they didn't need to tell you because it was an example like this where it would make no difference whether you balance an acid or base. It works out exactly the same because there's no H plus left over in the overall reaction. Cool. One other thing to note is you can check these at the end. If you have properly balanced this, the overall charges should be balanced as well. Well, these are both neutral compounds, so the overall charge on the reactant side is zero. These are both neutral compounds, so the overall charge on the product side is also zero. And the fact that those match doesn't for sure guarantee that it's right, <laughs> but if they didn't match, then it would for sure guarantee that it was wrong and you'd have to go back and figure out where your mistakes were. All right, so that is our balanced reaction here. And again, it, that's the balanced reaction in acid. That's the balanced reaction in base in this example. In the next example, we'll find out it's gonna look a little bit different whether we balance an acid or base, and we'll definitely do both. All right, here's our second example here. And uh, we could go through and assign oxidation states and figure out who's getting oxidized and who's getting reduced and which of the reactants is the oxidizing agent, which one's the reducing agent. So, but we're gonna do that at the end. I just wanna make sure that you realize that to balance a redox reaction, you actually don't have to assign those oxidation states first in using this half reaction method. So first thing I wanna do is split, a, uh, split this up into two half reactions. And in this case, there's not a lot of options here. So you can pretty much see that we're gonna have MnO4 minus going to Mn2 plus in one half, and then I minus going to I2 in the other half. And so if you've ever, you ever given a lot of more chemical species and stuff like that, and you gotta figure out which specific ones, so some words of the wise. If you see an element in its elemental form, it's in the zero oxidation state. So and most elements don't have multiple allotropes, don't have like multiple elemental forms. And so if it's in the elemental form on one side, odds are it's not in the elemental form on the other side. And here it's zero, here it's not zero. Yeah, that's changing. That should be in one half of your uh, one of your half reactions. So uh, the other one here, notice manganese as an ion, a monatomic ion, it's just easy to see, he's plus two. And so, you know, figuring what he is in this case as plus seven might be the way to go if you were trying to figure out who gets oxidized and who gets reduced. But again, to do the half reactions here uh, and solve this with the half reaction method, we don't have to assign oxidation states to start with at all, as long as you can identify what the half reactions are and split them up. All right. So first thing we want to do, once we've split them up, is balance all the elements except for oxygen and hydrogen. And the first one, the only other element besides oxygen or hydrogen is manganese, and they're balanced. For the second one, it's iodine, and they're not balanced, and so we're going to have to put a two right here. Next thing you want to do is then balance the oxygens by adding waters. In the first one, we've got four oxygens on the reactant side, none on the product side, so we're going to need to add four waters to make sure those oxygens are balanced. But notice that throws off the hydrogens. Now we got eight hydrogens on the product side, none on the reactant side, so we'll have to add eight H plus to balance those out. And now the oxygens and hydrogens for the first one are balanced. And the second one doesn't involve oxygen or hydrogen, so we don't even have to uh, incorporate waters or H plus or anything like that. Now that all the elements are balanced, we've got to balance out the electrons by balancing out the overall charge. And so here we can see that we've got eight H pluses. That's a total of plus eight. We've got one MnO4 minus, an overall charge of minus one. Finally, one manganese ion, overall charge of plus two. And then water overall is neutral with no charge there. Let's see if we can get that serious. All right, so we can see that with eight pluses and one minus, the entire reactant side is plus seven, but the product side is a total of just plus two. And so this is the more positive side at plus seven, and we're gonna have to have five charges, negative charges to it, to make it balance out to the same charge as the right-hand side. So again, the goal here is you have to realize I'm not balancing it out to zero just to while both sides have the same charge. And so with it being plus seven, we didn't need seven electrons, we only needed five to now both sides being plus two. And the next one here, we've got two iodide ions for a total charge of minus two. And then 
iodine as an element in its elemental form and has no overall charge. And so the more positive side is the right hand side. And we're going to need to add two electrons. And now both sides have the same charge, in this case, minus two. And so once again, we're not adding electrons to make both sides have a zero charge, but to make both sides have the same charge. And you always add those electrons to whichever side is more positive. All right, so five electrons on the reactant side. These electrons are being gained. This is the reduction half of the reaction. So in here, we've got two electrons on the product side. Those electrons are being lost. This is the oxidation half of the reaction. But the electrons being gained here and the electrons being lost here are the same electrons, so they've got to be the same number. And you ask yourself, okay, what is the least common multiple between 5 and 2? And the least common multiple is 10. And how do you make both these balance out to being 10 electron processes? Well, for this one, you're going to multiply that by 2. So, and for the second one, you're going to have to multiply that by 5. And let's rewrite both these out once we multiply all coefficients by 2 and 5 respectively here. And so 2 times 5 is 10 electrons, plus 2 times 8 is 16 H plus, 2 times 1 essentially is 2 MnO4 minus, goes to 2 Mn2 plus, and 2 times 4 is 8 waters. All right. And then this one times 5, so 5 times 2 is 10 I minus 5 I2, and then 5 times 2 is 10 electrons. And this is what we ultimately want to add together. So in the last one, I just kind of wrote it all out and then started canceling things. But you can kind of anticipate so that some things are going to cancel if, once you get used to these. We can definitely see that these electrons should cancel. And again, in any properly balanced uh, entire redox reaction, the electrons should not appear in it, and they should definitely cancel. Uh, and from here, nothing else is going to cancel, so let's just combine some terms here. All the reactants together on one side. And then all the products on the other side. Cool, and this is the balanced reaction, specifically in, by default, acid. And again, you can tell that a reaction has been balanced in acid because there's H plus either on the reactants or product side somewhere in the balanced reaction. So this is the balanced reaction in acid. If you were asked to balance this reaction in acid, you would be done. So however, if they'd asked you to balance it in base, you would have started out and worked this process all the way up till this step exactly the same but you've got one extra step to do if you want to balance this in base. And you got to look at this balanced reaction and say, well, what in this reaction would not exist in a basic solution to any appreciable extent? Well, that's H+, because H+, would get neutralized in a basic solution. And that's exactly what you do to balance this out, is you neutralize all of the H+. Well, H+, gets neutralized by OH- to form water. And so if you've got 16 of these H+,s, well, then you need to add 16 oh minuses. So, but we can't just do it on one side here because a second ago, this reaction was balanced in acid. It was balanced though. And so if we add 16 OH minuses only to the reactant side, it's no longer going to be balanced. So we've also got to add 16 OH minuses to the product side. Now on the product side, it's not neutralizing anything. We're just adding it in. But on this side, it's neutralizing the H plus. And when H plus reacts with OH minus, it forms water. And so 16 H pluses reacting with 16 OH minuses is going to form 16 waters. And we'll add the rest in. And we have these 16 OH minuses left on this side as well. Didn't neutralize anything. All right, now because we just formed a bunch of waters over here, and because water shows up so commonly because it's how we balance oxygens, now you should just check to see that did you, any of your waters cancel since you formed a bunch of new ones. And it's totally true. We got 16 on this side, we got 8 on this side. And these 8 right here are going to cancel out 8 out of the 16 here so that we only have 8 left. And we'll write this out one more time here. So eight waters plus two MnO4 minus 
plus 10 I minus goes to 2 MN2 plus. No water's left on this side, so plus 5 I2 plus 16 OH minus. And this is the balanced reaction in base. And again, the evidence that it's been balanced in base is that there's hydroxide either on the reactant or product side somewhere in the balanced reaction. Now we said in the last example that you can check to see if you've done this correctly. So at least you can check to see if very quickly if you've for sure done it incorrectly. Uh, because in a properly balanced redox reaction, when you've, all the electrons have been balanced and stuff, the charge should be balanced. So here we've got, in the acid form, we had 16 plus ones, two minus ones, 10 more minus ones. So 16 positive, two negative, we're down to plus 14. 10 more negative, we're down to a total of plus four on the reactant side. So two plus twos is plus four, and these are both neutral, and it's plus four. And the fact that both sides have the same charge doesn't guarantee, again, that you've got it correct, but if they didn't match, it would guarantee that you didn't, uh, that you didn't get it correct. All right, same thing works out in base. In base, uh, neutral, but we got two minuses here, 10 more minuses here for a total of minus 12 on the reactant side. And over here, we've got two plus twos, total of plus four there, and then 16 minus ones over there for a total of minus 12 on that side as well. And again, in any properly balanced redox reaction, the charges should balance. All right, one last thing here, and we'll just go back to the original. We said here that manganese is going from plus seven, and easy to identify as plus two here. And so manganese, there's oxidation state is going down, it's getting reduced. And so because it's getting reduced, it is the oxidizing agent. And we say it, we gotta make sure again, we specifically say the entire species. So it's MnO4 minus, that would be the uh, oxidizing agent in this case. And over here, we've got iodine in the minus one oxidation state going to iodine in the zero oxidation state. And so in this case, that's getting oxidized. And because this is the species getting oxidized, it is the reducing agent. We typically not just say iodine, but I minus the iodide ion in this case is the reducing agent as it's getting oxidized. So just a reminder of how you uh, identify those oxidizing reducing agents. They're always on the reactant side. And again, it will seem a little bit backwards. So, but hopefully uh, what we discussed earlier kind of hits home at some point here. Just like it was with the uh, oxidation number rules, best way to learn these rules, not simply look at the list and memorize them, but to work on them in the context of working out some examples. So keep those rules handy and just work your way through them on some examples, best way to learn. Now, if you found this lesson helpful, a like and a comment let me know are pretty much the best things you could do to support the channel. And if you're looking for practice on redox reactions, electrochemistry, or general chemistry in general, take a look at my general chemistry master course. It incorporates over 1,200 practice questions, video solutions for most of them, uh, study guides, practice final exams, final exam rapid reviews, lots of extra help for general chemistry. Uh, free trials available. I'll leave a link in the description. Happy studying.